And there it is. We are live. Two seconds in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Sure, boy. Sure, man, boy. man. Doing it again. Uh oh. See, man. If we ain't going live till I see it on my on my timeline, man. All right, all right. I don't know, man. We I don't believe we live until I you see don't. it on my timeline, man. You I don't believe, believe it. You so. see it? Come on now. You I don't believe it until I see it. Oh, there it is. You see it? I see it. What? Get out of here, man. I'm seeing. I'm seeing us live and direct. Word. Oh man, let me see. Let me see what the deal is, man. My my pooter's acting a little bit slow today, man. I don't know uh -oh, what the, the the pooter. I don't know what the ups is. I don't, I don't see it, man. Where are we at? Oh, there we go. I, I don't. I don't want to talk about your pooter. I want to talk about other things. Oh Keep man, the pooter to yourself. Killing me, Smalls. <laughs> let me see <laughs> here. I'm gonna interact as me, and then I'm gonna share this thing, man. There it is. I'm gonna hit share public. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we are we are a publicly traded commodity. Share live and direct timeline. for you. Share it over there too. All share right. it to the page. Bingo, bango, bongo. Man, we all over this thing, man. Yeah, we're, we're, we're done. We're doing it. All right. Welcome. We interrupt your regularly scheduled scrolling for a little <laughs> bit of a mm -hmm. little, little bit of knowledge dropping here, I think. You, you know how we do, man. Hey. I am Kirk M. Samuels. And I am Jason B. Kendrick. And we, we are the mad men of masculinity, baby. That's right. We're just real men having real conversations for you. And today is another real one. That's right. Uh, your boy. It's your boy. Oh, man. This boys, is get, your big, right get, your, get, your, get your big boy panties on because we this might have uh, right here. here. It's going to get deep right here, yeah, man. It's going to get real deep. You know <laughs> All right, man. So I'm just gonna keep it real, man. You know what? I, you know what else I'm doing? Hmm. I'm uh I'm looking up tea times for me and you to play some calls. <laughs> hey, we can multitask. We multitask. I got, so I, got the, I got the little tea time joint right there, man. It's all right. the Anybody want to do that family sports? Because that's how we roll. Oh right. man. Oh, it's kind of tight. That. Oh. Uh, well, my God, okay. Anyway. Oh man. While yeah. You anyhow. Getting on here <laughs> while you while you're watching us. Yeah. Hey. Hit hey. like. Hit share. Hit all. That's that right, kind of stuff, man. If Make you sure you like, share, YouTube, comment, subscribe, all that. Hit everything, man. Yeah. Hit everything but but your mama. Don't hit your mama. That ain't good at all. That ain't, that, good. that ain't good at all, man. JB, so today, JB, today, today we're talking real, about. Man. I'm telling you, I I, I love this real. topic. I love this topic. We're talking about male safety. Like, what this is the meaning? Real. Mm -hmm. I like I like your question. Do men need safety? Mm -hmm. This gonna get real, right here. Tell, tell me where it came from. Tell me oh, where. It came okay, from. so let me let me back up. Let's rewind. Let me back up. Let me, let me back up. Let me look over my shoulder and back up a little bit. Right, let me back up. First of all, JBK, now you are the connection catalyst. Yes, sir. Um, and, and so you do a lot of work with men and women and communication and all that kind of stuff. What would you say is probably the 1A or 1B of what women need most in relationships, emotionally? physically, all those kind of ways. What would you say would be very high up there for most women? Well, I mean, we I think we've covered it before, but I mean, cannot cover this enough, but the three main needs for the feminine, for the for the women is safety, meaning physical mm. safety, mm. security, meaning what's the purpose? That's where guys, when you get that, where's this going conversation is because she doesn't mm. feel secure. Mm -hmm. And then presence, like your presence, you being mm -hmm. there, you being 100% present with her. So mm. those are like the top three. And mm -hmm. if there's issues, you may look at those and say, where, where am I feeling in those three? Mm -hmm. And, and there, there are other needs as well, but those I feel like are the top three. Mm. Boom. So you hit it right off the top. You said safety. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say safety, put some in, because we got a lot of guys, you know, we got some dudes that need some little help. When you say safety from a female person, now, obviously, you're not a female. But again, you know, you you uh, you did stay at a holiday in last night. <laughs> but but he. But you, you uh, but you do, you know, you do, you do work in that that area, that arena. So, when you say safety, I want to narrow into that. When you say safety, what do you mean by that? Mainly, there's there's a lot of physical safety. You know, feeling safe and secure in the body, feeling safe and secure, like mm -hmm. she feels safe with you, that you can protect, that you can provide, that mm -hmm. you know, in her space, in her physical space, she is safe. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's the main thing, which is, is interesting because when you brought this topic up, it made me think of that. And then, what that means for men is a little mm -hmm. different. Yeah, but but so in her in her world of safety, um, 
is that relational safety as well? Like when she's in a relationship with a man, I mean, is that like safety within the context of the relationship too? I would think so. Well, that's what would come down to more of that security piece. That's more of that. Is she secure in the relationship? Does she trust her man to be a provider, a protector? Does, does she trust mm -hmm. him to be there and, and, and know what he's doing? And I know we, we, we have a lot of struggles relationship now with men and women because there are a lot of ladies who don't need men for their to provide them anything. Mm -hmm. And so now it's kind of it's turned around. It's this different secure thing. You know, do, does she mm -hmm. trust him? Does she honor him? Does she respect mm -hmm. him? It's, it's mm -hmm. a little different, but it's, it's along mm -hmm. the same lines of security. Now, so we we never we never really rehearse or really practice what we're talking about. We kind of throw a topic ahead of time, but we just off the cuff here. Um, do you think that, um, you know, in your experience in, in, in that area, do you think that um, that some women may find themselves struggling in the context of a relationship in terms of safety slash security? Um, if they're not sure about, let's say their man's, um, their man's um, commitment or, or their man's fidelity or, or something along those lines? Absolutely. I mean, that's, one of the things, and we've, we've talked about this before, and guys, just a reminder, you know, the reason we get tested, the reason the feminine tests us, the reason they ask questions, the reason they, they do those things is because that's how they find they find their security. It's how they find the safety in the relationship. You know, mm -hmm. if you can't tell her no, how are you going to tell another lady no? How can she trust you and feel secure in the relationship if you can't even tell her no? If you can't say, mm -hmm. draw the line with her and be like, no, no, no that's mm -hmm. far enough. You know, these are the boundaries of this. Yeah. And so some of that, some of that is setting boundaries. Some of that yeah. is like is you having boundaries, you defining boundaries, and and just even in your context. Really. Oh, by the way, if you're watching us and you're watching us live, you can type in comments. We can see you right here on the screen. So if any of you ladies watching this, even if you're not watching it live, you know, type in some comments and let us know what you think. We're we're kind of speaking on behalf of ladies to a degree, at least right now, in terms of our experience. So we love love to uh, love to have your feedback. So that being said, JBK. <clears throat> so, you know, it's probably not a far stretch and I doubt many women would disagree um, with uh, with everything you just said in terms of safety, security. Um, you know, I even heard at one point that, you know, physical safety is something that women commonly worry about that men don't really worry about. Mm -hmm. Like when's the last time we felt physically unsafe? Women, it's, you know, could be several times a day, could be yeah. every day. Guys, it might be like, uh, I don't know. Um, last time I drove through whatever. Um, so I don't think it's a far stretch for us to settle on the fact that, that, uh, for, for women, um, you know, safety and security is huge, but what I do think might be a far stretch and here's the crux of it. Now we're eight minutes and five seconds into this thing. Here's the crux of it. What I do think is a far stretch and something that we don't really talk about a whole lot is the man's need for safety specifically in the context of a relationship. Yeah. 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 I mean, male safety is, and I was about to jump in on it, but I didn't want to get too ahead of it. But I mean, male safety is different. It's not about the physical safety. Mm. For men, it's about the emotional safety. Ooh. It's about being able to be vulnerable and 100% and, and honest. Mm -hmm. And that's, and I mean, that's a stretch for a lot of people nowadays. I mean, everybody's mm. trying to play a role and try to be a, this this version of something to get the other person or to, to do who they, be who they think their partner needs versus mm. being authentic to who they are and mm. that's really i mean it's 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 societal i mean it's been going on generationally now what happens to women a lot of times and this is you know this is a generalization but a lot of times it's taken seriously especially mm. nowadays mm -hmm. and what happens to men most of the time it's just funny Mm -hmm. It's just joked about. It's not taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of emotionally stunted, emotionally unavailable men because mm -hmm. they're shut down. Mm -hmm. They've never been, never had the opportunity to feel safe with their emotions or to express their emotions. You know, we've all been taught to just stuff it down. Mm -hmm. don't, don't express, stuff it down. And so the only acceptable emotions for men over the last 40, 50 years is anger and, and, and amusement. Mm -hmm. You can be an angry man or you can laugh and be amusing. Mm. But feel weak, mm. feel feel depressed, feel mm -hmm. uncertain. Mm -hmm. That's not allowed. Wow, wow. So yeah, so from a man perspective, you know, I think especially yeah, in the context of relationship, you know, it's something that that 
that is easy for us to forget as men and definitely easy for the women in our lives to forget or lose track of or aren't even aware of is that, um, you know, to a degree, uh, you know, to a degree, a lot of us, it, one of the things we talked about talking here today about was the hero complex. And we'll come back and we'll hit that in the future. Um, but I think every man wants to be a hero, um, especially in, in the area of relationship to his woman. He wants to be the hero. Um, and but at the same time, we all juxtapose that with the feeling of, man, I'm a fake, like the feeling of um, and obviously I'm speaking in generalities, but um, just the feeling of like, man, you know, because a lot of times, you know, she looks at us the way we don't necessarily see ourselves. And and, you know, and, and yeah, there's a lot of things that we aren't allowed to kind of discuss freely yeah. and be accepted, be socially accepted because it's seen as weakness. Um, and so we don't get a chance to express those things a whole lot. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, and there's actually an example today. I had a, a was with a friend and we were discussing this and it seems like, and I, I know we've had this discussion before about how we as men try to look at women as men. We try to understand them mm -hmm. as we would understand a man because we try to talk to them the way we want to be talked to and vice versa. Women want to figure men out like they, you know, how they talk to their women and their girlfriends, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't really work. You know, we're, mm -hmm. as men are more linear, more logical, more just kind of surface. And we, we put everything in a box where ladies mm -hmm. are connected and emotional mm -hmm. and, and they get all the subtext. Mm -hmm. And what I um, was kind of exposed to today, was, which is interesting because it makes a lot of sense. A lot of very intelligent, educated women are, are, are trying to figure their men out mm -hmm. without actually being vulnerable and having those vulnerable conversations. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, the, 93% of communication is nonverbal, mm -hmm. and then they can latch onto that and look at every little expression, look at every little body posture and every little thing, mm -hmm. and think they understand mm -hmm. what's going on inside their man's mind. And mm -hmm. what tends to happen if you were doing that without actually having those conversations, because we men, if we feel safe, we will tell you. Mm -hmm. We will unload and, and, and tell you, but if we don't feel safe, Ooh. we're gonna keep it in. Ooh. And so you, it's mm -hmm. a matter of allowing that feeling of safety to be vulnerable and mm -hmm. to be, you know, open and honest about what we're feeling without feeling like we're going to be judged. Mm -hmm. And then you'll, you'll, you'll know exactly what we're feeling. If we feel mm -hmm. safe, we'll tell you point mm -hmm. blank. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting there trying to figure your man out by all of his gestures and postures and facial tics and things like that, what you're basically doing is having a relationship with a man who's not there because mm -hmm. you don't know what's going on with him. You're just trying to figure out what's going on, on the outside. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, there, there are times when she might ask him, what is he thinking? Mm -hmm. And he might say nothing. Yeah. Um, which sometimes he could literally be thinking nothing. That's our favorite box. That's our favorite it's spot. Possible for us to think about nothing. Yeah. Sometimes, though, sometimes I, I think really the answer is you don't want to know what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like either you can't handle what I'm thinking um, or what I'm thinking might freak you out. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think that part goes back to. Um, to what you were just uh, alluding to as far as the safety aspect and his openness in terms yeah. of, you know, our, our safety and our security comes in. And I, I'm going to use the word fear, but I'm going to use it lightly only because I don't feel like thinking of another word. But right. uh, a fear of two different things, a fear of either judgment or rejection. Yep. And uh, hey, John, how you doing, my brother? Uh, man, these guys are, man, these, these couple guys, man, they're doing some good stuff called the pursuit, man. Good to nice. see you looking forward to our next conversation, speaking that truth. You know, these guys are doing, anyhow, these guys are doing some, some deep work with, with men coming up, man. Um, uh, so what's up, John? Uh, tell Hutch I said hi. Anyhow, um, that was a commercial, uh, <laughs> commercial interruption. But, you know, us as guys, you know, we're, 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 we're afraid of fear or we're afraid of judgment and we're afraid of rejection. And so when when we do find a relationship where he's not open to just say what it is, then it's it's one of those two things. It's either if I tell you you're going to judge me, or if I tell you you're going to leave me. Yeah. And and so you know some of the sometimes we have to ask the question, why is he afraid to tell me whatever it is I want him to tell me? Yeah. And if a man won't tell you something that you know he's keeping something from you then it comes down to those two questions quite often. Yeah, is he afraid of my judgment or is he afraid of my rejection or abandonment? Yeah. And, and if, if the answer to those, I mean, if there's any question in those, yeah, he's going to hold off and he's going to be like, yeah, 
No, not so much. Yeah, because I mean, just just like ladies test us in our own way, we we will test the ladies mm -hmm. to find out how safe they are mm -hmm. and drop little things. You know, like we'll make mm -hmm. little jokes, drop little things. Just and it is sometimes it's even almost unconscious. We're just we'll mm -hmm. make some kind of you know we'll push that edge just a little bit just to see where the line is, where where we'll get rejected, where we'll get judged. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if that's a shallow line, if it's if it if it's just some silly joke and you get upset and judge us. Don't expect us to go much deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, you could you could you could stunt that you could amputate that whole thing pretty quickly. And yeah. I'm just, let me can I just cut to the chase, man? Can do it, I do it. get real? Get, rid of get it. really, really real, real quick. All right, let's, let's just cut it. right to let's cut right to the meat. Let's cut right to the bone. So I work a lot with guys that struggle with pornography, yeah. addiction, not just pornography consumption, but pornography addiction. And um Okay. And I find, and, and a lot of those men are in relationships. And, uh, and that's probably one of the things that prompts them to come work with me is because their the relationship is falling apart um, or has fallen apart or is struggling or whatever. And, you know, I, I see this pattern over and over and over again. And it really just hit me recently, kind of the full circle behind it. And that pattern is when a guy is in a relationship and he's struggling with his sexuality in the context of a relationship, I'm going to say that specifically. He's struggling with his sexuality in the context of a relationship. Yeah. The pattern is he will divulge it little by little by little by little. Like, like he'll, and that's the testing that you were just talking yeah. about. He'll test it. He, he might put it out there a little bit. He might tell you a little bit of what happened or a little bit of his freak or his kink or a little bit of what type of porn he likes to watch or whatever it is, or a little bit of the things that he's done. Um, but, but he won't, he, it'll be a slow drip yeah. and the slow drip is the test of, can I trust you with this? Are you safe and are you secure? The problem is that slow drip creates an unsafe atmosphere and environment for her uh -huh. because she's worried about well, what's the next thing. Well, what don't I know? What don't I know? What don't I know? Where she wants the whole truth, but he's saying like, like a few good men, you, you can't, can't handle the truth. <laughs> you know exactly where I'm going, man. Yes, sir. Exactly it. It's like I want the truth, and she, you know, he's like, you can't handle the truth. You know, I eat breakfast 300 yards from, you know, <laughs> from I, whatever. I mean, and, yeah. and so that's that's that thing that plays out, man. And and so it's a it's an unsafe cycle that goes back and forward. And man, I'm I'm realizing that, man, this is a pattern that I'm seeing over and over and over again. Yeah, I mean, in my experience, when I was in relationships, which one of the reasons I quit, I was like, okay, common denominator, I'm gonna stop trying to relate to, you know, these women and work on me, and that's where all of this study. And I mean, I took myself to school for the last six years, and I saw in my patterns when I was stressed out, when I felt unsafe, when I didn't feel supported, the first thing to go was my sex drive, which that caused issues because I didn't feel safe talking about it because that showed me as weak or not as much of a man because my sex drive was falling off. And then I would medicate using the porn or using you know mm -hmm. something to, to mm -hmm. make myself feel better. And without having that open dialogue or feeling safe to talk about these things, like I couldn't tell that woman at that time that I'm stressed out, you're stressing me out, mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to make like soothe myself. Mm -hmm. And that's why when I'm stressed out, worried about making money, worried about paying the bills, worried about trying to provide, that tends to take away that sexual energy because it's directed mm -hmm. somewhere else yeah and yeah not having that outlet not because i mean just like you said i felt number one i knew i would be judged mm -hmm. and it was pretty damn sure i'd be rejected mm -hmm. but then i felt like most men on an island by myself mm -hmm. trying trying mm -hmm. to build a shelter out of sand to protect mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. without any sort of oasis or any sort mm -hmm. of hope that i'm going to find something that's going to make me feel safe in that mm -hmm. environment yeah and see, one of the one of the secrets by one of the secrets of the sauce of of the way something like and now this is this whole conversation is not about pornography, but I see it in this realm. One of the secret one of the secret weapons that that has is that there's no judgment. Yep. I, I call her the IP mistress. The uh, I call I personify pornography. I call her a mistress in the in the relationship or in the family and in the home and. And there's no judgment from her part. Like you can always escape to her and you can open up your deepest, darkest kinks and fetishes and all that kind of stuff. And she's like, come on with it. You know, she's like, bring it more and more and more. Matter of fact, I got I got more of that than you do kind of thing. Yeah. And so when guys struggle and, and particularly in the area of their sexuality, 
that's one way that they can escape to your point. That's one way to escape. That's one way to go where there is no judgment, where it's safe. And that's the, that's the, that's the beauty behind, you know, being able to, to depart your sexuality into somewhere else, whether it's a real mistress, you know, real life human being mistress, or today more commonly a, a, a digital mistress is that there's no judgment and you can live out your kinks. You can live out your, you can leave out your, all of that kind of stuff. And so from a man's perspective, you know, that safety is huge and especially in the area. And it, if you can find a man that's open with his, that, that feels safe in the area of his sexuality with his woman, he's open everywhere. Oh yeah. I mean, he's open. I mean, so that's almost like the, the Holy grail of safety. I mean, that's the Holy grail of safety for a guy. And that brings up a good point. Cause, um, when you get into that rabbit hole, when you get into the IP mistress and you get into the porn and things, what I've noticed a lot of times, what really brings up judgment is a lot of ladies assume that because their man is watching this sort of thing, that's what he wants or what he likes. <laughs> but there's a whole rabbit hole that once you get once you get that dopamine hit, because we all started off with the the 90s, you know, mm. dial up internet, waiting 15 minutes for a picture to download. Now it's instantaneous, but then you don't get the same hit. You don't get the same dopamine mm. hit. So then you're like, well, what's the next kinkier thing? What's the next kinkier thing? And you go down the rabbit hole. And there are a lot of ladies who just assume that because he's watching whatever this is, that that's what he wants. No, that's just, that's just you know, the, the, the what's good. Like that, that's the next higher dose that he needs. Dude, you are filthy, man. I'm telling yeah. you. I mean, I'm freaking out right now because I just had that exact same conversation with somebody yesterday, yeah. I believe, that that she thinks that because he's watching that, he wants me to do that. Yeah. And in actuality, he's watching that because, I mean, yeah, because of the rabbit hole and because he has safety enough to even explore that, yeah. to window shop. Women window shop all the time when they go to the mall. Going yeah. shopping don't mean buying something for women. And so, you know, guys, that might be a window shopping thing. It's like, no, nah, I don't want it. I'm, you know, I might try it on. I'm yeah. not justifying it, by the way, but I'm, tr I'm trying to rationalize it in a way that's apples to apples. Right. And so... I was just having that conversation with somebody yesterday about the fact that because he's watching it doesn't necessarily mean he wants to do it with you. It's just it's just that bunny trail that it goes. No, there, there, there are things I'll watch on my laptop in the safety with my locked door, my window is shut that I would never in my yeah. wildest dreams ever even want to experience or even look at in person. Right, right. It's just one of those things. It's like you're in this little bubble. Yeah. You're it's safe, safe. So you're like, it's safe. You're safe. Absolutely. It's it's safe and it's the safety of it all. And so. So, you know, so sometimes when we're in this back and forward in relationships and and we can all settle on the fact that women need emotional safety, physical safety, financial, whatever other kind oh, yeah. of safety it is, they need all that kind of safety. We forget the fact that men need safety, too. Yeah. Men need to, I need to know, baby, I need to know that when I open up to you, you're not going to judge me and you're not going to leave me. Yeah, I, I mean, need to know that I, I'm not going to be rejected by yeah. you. I'm not going to be shamed by you. You're not going to go ill, you creepy, you nasty, uh -huh. or 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 I can't believe you said that. I can't. I mean, I, I'm not saying women should put up with anything. I'm not saying that, but I'm I'm talking about in the context of a relationship. Can he feel safe or not? A guy can tell me something that you know. I've had a guy, you know, tell me. <laughs> I've had many guys tell me mm -hmm. a whole lot of things, and you know, even some stuff that they got busted on that was illegal. Some federal yeah. cases and all that kind of stuff and i never freak out man i'm just like word i mean yeah, yeah you know i mean and, and so when you and i hear it over and over again when when guys feel safe guys are like man i can tell you anything dude yeah. i'm like yeah you can because i'm not gonna freak out yeah i mean but safety is huge man well and that's another reason men you need to have your guy friends you need to have a men's group mm -hmm. so you can have that yeah. safety you yeah. can talk about those things yeah. yes. but also if you need a visual and this is one of the things that we've brought up before, and I need, think we need to reiterate it a few more times. If you look at, say, like a yin yang and how they penetrate on the, on, different, on the top and the bottom, the feminine penetrates at the top with the breast, he penetrates the man's heart. Ooh. Whereas the men, we penetrate at, at, at the, the, the groin. And oh, so it's a, is... it's a different thing. That's why for women, it's a physical safety. For men, it's emotional heart safety. So if you need that vision, think about that. Oh, that is filthy, dude. Oh, physical yeah. safety. And for men, yeah, emotional heart and, and, and sexual safety. I yeah. mean, whether you're having sex or not, maybe you're just getting together and maybe as a, as a couple, you haven't begun to have sex yet. I don't know, whatever the scenario, but, but with his sexuality, can he trust you with his sexuality in whatever context that is? And if he can trust you there, 
you can take the keys, you can take the wallet, you can sign <laughs> over everything. But you got it all. If he can trust you in that area to just at least not freak out. Don't judge him and don't don't leave him or don't threaten to leave him or anything like that. I mean, and, and that's a good place to be. Yeah. The ladies, I mean, the best thing you say to a man if he's open up to you is that it? Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like yeah. no judgment is that yeah. it because yeah. if we don't feel emotionally safe, and that's the thing, what I'm really starting to see and what a lot of the work is coming up to with a lot of the couples, a lot of people I'm working with is understanding that relationships are about vulnerability. You are mm -hmm. about creating a safe space. Because mm -hmm. in all my past experience, I was trying to be that plastic version mm -hmm. of masculinity in my relationships and not mm -hmm. being vulnerable. Yeah, We need to learn that relationships are about vulnerability, about safety, yeah. about yeah. If, the, if I can trust you with my heart, can you trust me with your heart? And if yeah. we can trust each other with our hearts, we can build anything, we can do anything. Yeah. But without that trust, there's mm -hmm. no foundation. Man, it's, I mean, it's the trust, it's the connection, it's the vulnerability, and all of that leads to intimacy, man. Yes, and, and women want intimacy. Men want intimacy, too. We just don't know how to verbalize it. Uh -huh. And quite often, the reason why we default to sexuality is because our sexuality is kind of the front door to our intimacy. Yeah. Um, we, feel the most, we feel the most intimate right after sex. And she feels the most sexual right after intimacy. Mm -hmm. And so for us, you know, but to get that intimacy common ground, so it's two sides of the same coin. We're both seeking the same thing. We both want the 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 silver dollar, but we're on heads or tail heads or tails of it all. But um, but in order to get there for the guy, you know, the feeling of safety and trust and the feeling of all that leads to intimacy. And when he can open up to you and we can tell you his weaknesses and vulnerabilities uh -huh. and and all those kinds of things. You know, it's not that that you're in danger of his of his weaknesses. It's not that you know that's going to play out. But to your point, man, I don't want to lose the fact that you know when you just said he needs some guy friends that he can mm -hmm. just be a part of a guy group, a guy circle, or just some bros that he can go spend time with, and that he can have refrigerator rights and just share whatever. Yeah, I mean that that's just and it's just like for the ladies too. You got to have your girlfriends so you guys mm -hmm. can talk about all the details and all the emotional stuff and all the things that your man may not be comfortable with or may not. Because yeah. we've talked about so many times is that polarity, that masculine and feminine polarity is what creates the sexuality, which creates mm -hmm. the chemistry. Mm -hmm. And if you're spending too much time together, you start to emulate each other. Mm -hmm. He becomes more feminine, you become more masculine, and then you lose mm -hmm. polarity. Now you're like, you're, you're roommates. Yeah. Yeah. You're, there's no attraction. Yeah. Yeah. And so for us to have that time, man, for us to have masculinity time, for us to have, you know, sharpening each other like two iron swords and, or, I mean, you know, sparring partners and challenging each other and all those kinds of things, man. And and going deep in some areas that quite quite honestly, a lot of women wouldn't want to go deep in. Like you don't want to know the kind of stuff we struggle with, or you don't, you know, you don't want to hear that because that could very well change your oppression, yeah. you know, uh, about us kind of stuff. And, and then we're able to show back up with her yeah. with a sense of masculinity as opposed to we can show up as the the scarred man, not the wounded boy. Yeah, that's just part of that healing process. And so for the ladies watching, for you watching this on replay, if you want this secret sauce for men, because I know a lot of you are sick and tired. You think all men are dogs, all they want is sex. Well, most men are starved of intimacy. We're starved of physical mm -hmm. connection. And so in our minds, in our training, in our background, all we think of is, well, it's got to be sex. I got to have sex so I can get a little piece of that. And mm -hmm. so we'll, you know, you get desperate enough, you'll you'll try to chase whatever to get, mm -hmm. get just a little bit of that. Yeah. If you want to make sure your man never cheats, that he is loyal to you, if you are the safe haven for him to be weak, if you're the safe haven for his emotions, if you do not judge him, you do not um, emotionally castrate him by threatening to leave or, or, or be judging of when he opens up to you, that man will never leave you because mm -hmm. you are now his safe haven. And that's what mm -hmm. we're all looking for. Just as you need us to be that boundary keeper, the, the, the one that keeps the foundation, the boundaries, mm -hmm. and, and has that, you know, we're, we're the, the pole that you can hang your flag mm -hmm. on. We need you to be our safe haven. Mm -hmm. so that when Because that's the thing, we come home, we've had a hard day. Mm -hmm. We need to have a moment of just like unloading, of being weak, of being like, I man, I don't, I don't know about this, I don't know about this guy, I don't know about this thing, and just have that moment where we, we can vent. Mm -hmm. And we don't feel safe doing that, then it builds up. And that, that creates mm -hmm. all of that tension and, and, and all those issues where you ladies can feel something's off mm -hmm. and he won't talk about it because he doesn't feel safe. Mm -hmm. 
And so then you start making up a story about, oh, he's cheating or he's doing this or he's doing another thing. Well, he may just be dealing with work or his own insecurities, mm -hmm. but he doesn't feel safe enough to divulge that to you because he's mm -hmm. afraid of being judged and rejected. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. happened. I mean, Brene Brown talks about it in one of her books, um, Men, Women, and Worthiness. A man came to her, like he went with his uh, wife to one of her things and he came up to her and after they signed the books, the man's standing there and the wife's like, come on, honey. He's like, no, I want to ask questions. She's like, come on, honey. He's like, no, I want to ask questions. So finally, the wife walks off, and then Brene's like, hi. And he says, why don't you work with men? He's like, well, I just don't. I work with women. He's like, well, isn't that convenient? Mm -hmm. and she goes, well, what do you mean by that? He's like, well, my wife and two daughters would rather see me die on my white horse than ever be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So it's one of these things that we have to take responsibility of our conditioning. And ladies, you do as well. If he's vulnerable and you judge him, mm -hmm. that's just adding fuel to that fire of his yeah. own his own internal beating up and judgment and and his own feeling less of a man mm -hmm. and like i said man you know on the back side of his sexuality is his intimacy yes. um and that's just kind of the way the way we're wired now i can hear a woman somewhere saying yeah but what about us um mm -hmm. what about me this is the mad men of masculinity <laughs> we're trying to we're, we're having you know guy talk this is talk that guys don't have you won't find i haven't found or seen couple guys you know anywhere having real these conversations where guys can open up about stuff and 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 women could get some insight um but guys can as well and 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 from a guy perspective you know the reality is i'm not the only one like i'm not alone you know and, and so that's why we have these conversations and so we're just trying to give you uh some perspective um yeah and ladies and, if you take the if you take what you hear here and use it to your advantage, you can create those yeah. environments. You can create that relationship you want because yeah. if he doesn't feel just like if you don't trust him or respect him, he's not going to feel safe with you and mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. and you can take what you hear here and maybe even set up an opportunity, have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Be like, do you feel safe with me emotionally? Do you feel safe to open up to me yeah. and, and allow him to express himself? Because most likely he's going to say no. And you're going to mm -hmm. have to take, you know, swallow that pill and then talk about it. Mm -hmm. yeah, this, this is deep stuff and you know that's a good point is that you know it, it's a it's a it's a probably a very mature woman that can take a step back and say maybe i am creating an unsafe environment uh, emotionally for my man yeah. i mean i, I would think it'd be you know a, 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 i'll be a, totally honest and say it'd be rare um but i think you know a, a gift a gift from a woman to her man could be saying asking the question i mean honestly am i a safe space emotionally for you and 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 if there's you know any relationship challenges maybe just saying you know what there's some things that i've said to him that may make him feel or have made him feel judged or have made him feel like i could reject him and maybe i am creating part of this unsafe environment even if it's 10 percent, yeah. make that 10 percent your 100 percent and and say maybe i'm creating or have created an unsafe environment for him and maybe that's why he can't open open up to me and tell me the things that he's telling me and maybe he needs to go spend some time with some guys when me and you go play golf man i mean you know we it's not about the golf <laughs> i'm not even that good you know and you're a lot better when you play with me apparently because it's only like the other day um, yeah. But uh, but it's not even about just the golf. It's about the time in the cart and the talking about whatever and all that kind of stuff, man. And and so, you know, all those kinds of things. But I think, you know, a whole woman like a, a well-meaning woman, you know, might serve her relationship well if, if she and this is a challenge, clearly. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, I, this is a challenge from me to said woman in relationship. If she sat back and re, really talked about or thought about or evaluated am I a safe space emotionally and particularly in the area of his sexuality for my man? And maybe, you know, and could I have created an environment if my man is not open with me in every way, could I have created an environment where he doesn't feel safe? And another thing to keep in mind, ladies too, and, and this is one of the things that I just went on a week long trip with my mother and her girlfriend and some friends to, Yosem or to Yellowstone. And I had to make the comment several times. And of course it's my mother she means well and i know mm -hmm. all of you ladies mean well mm -hmm. men do not take the criticism or, or the suggestions the way you intend them mm -hmm. when you're with your girlfriends and your girlfriend's like i don't know girl if you should wear that or you really you sure about that and you offer that piece of advice you as women for the most part in generalization love that because you feel like oh well say they, they care about me they're giving me some advice or they're, they're making sure i don't look silly or whatever what i'm wearing 99.999 mm -hmm. percent of men will take that as criticism mm -hmm. And the more you are trying to help 
by giving those little pieces of advice, the more he feels judged and criticized. Mm. Wow. So just something to be aware of that wow. if you're talking to us like you talk to your girlfriend and he's mm. not reacting the way you expect, he's probably feeling judged and criticized. And then that will cause him to start to shut down and feel unsafe. Wow. You know what I just realized? Every time you, of all the times you and I play golf, you've never tried to correct my game. Mm -hmm. I'm nowhere near as good as you, but you have never tried to say, you know, if you just held it this way or if you did, you know. You I didn't mean, ask. Well, there you go. But I mean, it's, and so it's safe. So I can be terrible in golf and have a great morning because yeah. I'm out with JBK and we just doing our thing and, and nobody's fixing nothing or whatever. So, yeah. man, that when you said that, that's what that's what I just thought about, man. I mean, it's that golf cart is a safe space for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that's good stuff, so let's bring this plane in for a landing, man. We've been at this thing 35 minutes. Um, uh, and so when it comes down to, again, it's really easy to to accept and acknowledge that that women need safety. But when it comes to men needing safety, let, let's do it. First of all, there's A and B. What advice would you give to men? And what advice would you give to women in the context of male safety? Men need to be take the time to find a woman that you feel safe with and who, who you can open up to and, and be willing to be vulnerable enough to say, hey, I need you to be strong for me and hold this container for me when I'm feeling weak and I need to be able to tell you these things. Because mm -hmm. we don't set the, the foundation and criteria, how is she gonna know? Mm -hmm. And for ladies, remember he's a guy, he's not your girlfriend, he needs that safety, but also if you feel unsafe, communicate that to him. Because mm -hmm. on our next one, we talk about the hero complex, we men are ingrained. It is in our DNA to protect and provide for the feminine. Mm -hmm. And so if you give us those instructions, we will do that. We will be your hero with those things if we feel respected and we feel like you're safe. Mm. Mm. Wow. I, I, I would say um, answer my own question, I guess, because sure. you didn't ask it back to me. Um, I, but, <laughs> I would say, oh, did I just criticize you, man? <laughs> uh, no, but, uh, I, I would say, man, that, uh, you know, from a man perspective, uh, first of all, we do need men in our lives. We do need to connect. We do need to we do need men to help, um, you know, help us with uh, just the safe space and the and who we are and developing our masculinity and developing our, our man. It takes a man to make a man. Um, and, and it takes men to help develop a man. And so I think, men, we need to keep in those spaces. We can't shy away and try to do this thing solo. Um, we can't live that way at all. Um, and then at the same time, you know, she needs the safety to know everything that she says she wants to know. Now, the backside of that is, well, what if she leaves me? Well, you know what? If she leaves you, then that's her call and that's her choice. Um, but on the flip side, give her the option, give her the choice to yeah. stay or go. And if she decides to go, then she wasn't yours in the first place. And, and, you know, but if she loves you unconditionally, you know, give her what she's asking for. If she wants the whole truth, then, you know, give it to her like Colonel Jessup did and few good men, you know, I mean, I mean just say, yeah, I ordered the code red. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> and so, you know, give it to her and then let her choose what to yeah. do with that. Even if, her, if she's asking for it, I'm not saying bust in the door and, but if she's like, you know, coming at you, I want the I want the whole truth then you know, give it to her, honor her with the choice to 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 do what she wants to do with with the truth. Ladies, I would say acknowledge the fact that your man needs safety and acknowledge the fact that if he can't be completely open with you, then you might be, you know, you might be part of the overall unsafe environment in the relationship and you got to ask yourself if i mean if you want to be a grown-up you got to ask yourself could i have or could i be creating an unsafe environment for my man and what do i need to do in that context and if you do come at him wanting the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you god because <laughs> you are going to get i mean you be careful what you're going to get when you want a, a man's whole truth and and you know and if you freak out then then you only have you to blame because you weren't ready for what you were asking for. And if you go after something that you ain't ready for, then it's your, your fault in terms of the consequences. So um, yeah, two, I think two, there's, there's a lot of work. Two things that you made me think of just close on my side and we'll, we'll land this plane and, and get on with the day. Number one, rejection is protection and redirection. So guys, if you're honest with her and she leaves, she's doing you a favor. You're doing mm -hmm. her a favor by being honest. Mm -hmm. Ladies, 
stop trying to find a man you can fix or fix up. If you don't love him the way he is, I mean, yes, you can help us like organize our clothes and stuff like that. But if that's about as deep as it needs to go, mm-hmm. stop trying to make projects out of men. Mm-hmm. I've had it happen and it, it doesn't end well. Mm-hmm. If you don't love him the way he is and see somebody you can grow with and work with and be vulnerable with, yeah, move on. Do, yeah. do, do each of you a favor mm-hmm. and, and be honest. And good luck trying to find a 40 something year old man with no issues. <laughs> if you find a if you find a 40 some year old man that doesn't struggle with something, uh try to, doing his work. Try, try to capture it and keep it safe. We'd like to study it. Um, yeah. you know, and so uh so yeah, that's that's the reality of it. Man, so if somebody wants to talk to the 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 connection catalyst, if they want to get a hold of the connection catalyst and, and you know they like some stuff you said and they want to contact you, how do they do that, man? Um you can get a hold of jbk right there jasonbkendrick.com mm-hmm. uh, look up on facebook on linkedin on instagram give me a call 970-333-4616 we're starting a brand new group coaching and one-on-one coaching all around communication intimacy with yourself and how to attract all those things you want mm-hmm. and you know sometimes i get a little busy and i know this man this this intimacy incubator this man who is powerful beyond measure right over here, Mr. Kirk M. Samuels. If they mm. want to get all of you and they want to figure out how to get away from porn addiction or they want to find out mm. how to become more connected to themselves in their marriage, how can I get a hold of you? As the Intimacy Incubator, with strength, wisdom, gentleness, and mercy, I co-create a world of intimacy and unconditional connection by teaching and inspiring one million men how to live free from internet pornography. And once you live, sure. boom, drop it. Once you're free, then you're available. And once you're available, you can have whatever it is that you want in life, particularly in the area of intimacy, true intimacy, not sexuality, intimacy, three dimensional, four dimensional intimacy kind of stuff. So KirkMSamuels.com. Where's my little thing? KirkMSamuels.com. Get a hold of me. 720-515-6536. I'm your boy. Sha boy. Sha boy. JBK, this is always a good time, man. I, I man. love you. Man. Like, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back next week, y'all, because we got to talk about man. oh, the hero complex, man. Yes, we got to drop that hero complex yeah. on them, man. Don't oh man, I'm, I'm gonna man. give you. I, I got a, I got a phrase that if any woman says this to her man, she's got a lock. St- I got a phrase that is your go to. Oh. That is the secret to hit the kryptonite to his heart, and he will give you everything. I got a phrase for it. We're gonna come up with that on the, right. on the hero complex. I love it. All right, y'all. We love you. Like, share, comment, tell your friends. We'll be back next week. And if we, if you need something else to talk about, if you have questions, send it to us. We we got obviously we don't shy away from subjects. So let us get real. Let us know. Love y'all. See you next week. Peace out. <laughs>